Hey YouTube guys and YouTube gals, it's me, Magnum over at Guns and Cars with two Z's, if you please. Remember the other day when I was telling you that we were going to do something? This is the day we're going to do it. So I need you to round up all your friends and come over to my house. I'll be in the kitchen, just come in the front door, okay? I'll see you in a few minutes. Hurry up! Hey, come on in. Are you the YouTube guys and YouTube gals? Yeah, you're here for the sauerkraut video? Yeah, well come on in. I'm Magnum. Yeah, good to see you. Uh, guns and Cars kitchen here. Come on in. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this sauerkraut deal. So, come on in. Let me show you what we, what we got set up here so far. First of all, we got a four gallon crock. Main thing is to make sure everything is clean. So I've washed it out real good. I've sprayed it with hydrogen peroxide and wiped that out. Hannah, be quiet. Uh, chopping board, a knife that's nice and sharp. Pinto, are you out there? Yeah, well, sorry. This is the only knife I've got to use for this. Uh, anyway, we've got cabbage. We've got six heads of cabbage. I don't know if you can see all this or not, but. Let me bring you over here and you can see what else is here. We've got some pickling and canning and pickling salt. Measuring spoons because this is a pretty scientific operation. We've got a big plate. You'll see what that's for later. And we've got a little five pound weight. You'll see what that's for. And we've got a plastic bag, and I'll show you what that's for too. So what we're going to do right now is start chopping this cabbage. I won't make you watch me chop all six heads uh, because that's probably going to be kind of boring, at least for me, probably for you too. So uh, once we get started here, I will stop the stop the video camera and. Uh, I'll chop some more without you guys watching. I do want to mention a couple of things while I'm doing this. So first thing, uh, we take off the outer leaves. At least, at least one of them. And then I usually cut off the end of the stalk here to get rid of that part. And uh, then we just begin. I wanted to uh, mention a couple of things. There are a lot of uh, videos online about how to make sauerkraut. A lot of them go to a whole lot of trouble that you don't need to go to. This is the, uh, the old-fashioned way that my grandmother taught me. Uh, when I was a kid, my parents grew up in... Tennessee, and every year we would go to um, Cookville, Tennessee, to visit my grandparents. And my grandmother, after we were there a day or two, at, at some particular point, my grandmother would uh, tell me to come with her. And we would go down into the cellar. She had a stone cellar. And she would find a quart jar of, she called it kraut, not sauerkraut, that she had canned the previous uh, summer probably, or, or maybe uh, that spring. Anyway, she, uh, we would get that and bring it upstairs, and it was... It was a treat for all of us. Well, at least for the kids. We all loved it. And uh, she made a, a chopped kraut. It wasn't a shredded kraut, so it wasn't soft and soggy like uh, shredded kraut can be. It was crisp 
and uh, tangy, very good. And she taught me how to make it, um, sort of. She kind of told me how she made it, but uh, she didn't really teach me. But after she died, my Uncle Joe, who is my favorite uncle of all time, uh, started making it. And uh, it was just like my grandmother's. And we called her Mammy. That was, her, that was what everybody called her. It was uh, very good. So my dad decided he would make some too. Well, my dad, I think, missed out on the uh, salt to cabbage ratio because his, his kraut was so salty that no one could eat it. So, anyway, I've made this uh, two or three times and uh, it usually comes out pretty good because my uncle gave me the salt to cabbage ratio and it works real good. So anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to keep chopping some stuff here and uh, when I come back I'll show you how we put the salt in and how much and what happens when we do that. So, uh, you can go, there's some refreshments in the other room if you want to go get some and I'll call you when I'm ready for you to come back. Okay, carry on. Oh hey guys, come on in. Um, we're getting ready to do the uh, next part where we mix the salt and the cabbage and uh, I want you all to see this so uh, Mark 16, 16 is not here. Superfly, fat guy, A59, would you go get him and uh, get uh, Benny Big Gun too while you're at it because I don't see him and Krista Blade, I don't know where she went but uh, somebody get her too and bring in all the rest of them too. And I'm gonna move the camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll see you when you get back. Okay, everybody back? All right, here's the deal. One and a half approximately tablespoons per quart. I did the math on this already and uh, it comes out to right at a teaspoon Per cup. So I'm going to gonna pack this into the cup. By the way, we've got two head two heads of cabbage chopped up here so far. We got a ways to go yet. We're we're a third of the way done. All right, so that's one cup. And that's gonna be one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon. We just spread that around in there and we go for a second cup. Okay. And this, you don't have to be, you know, scientifically accurate on this. Just try to make it as close as possible. A teaspoon per cup. Okay. This isn't going to take too long. All right, that's three cups. And I want to keep track of this so that I'll know how many canning jars I need to take care of canning all this. So that's three cups. I would talk to you while I'm doing this, but I'll lose track of what I'm doing. So I'll keep doing this and when I get done, I'll show you what happens when you mix salt and cabbage together. So carry on. Hey guys and gals, I'm back. Uh, I've been uh, chopping some cabbage while you were gone and I wanted to show you what's going on here, but uh, I need all of you here. I don't, I don't see TJ from Midwest Middle Class. Uh, Christian, Swedish Paracord Nut, could you go find him? And by the way, I still need the, those pictures of your beautiful country. And uh, Pinto Blades, I don't see you out there. Mr. Coop, would you go see if you can find Pinto? 
And uh, let's see who else. Trees are blowing. I see you. Uh, BB Mize, you're out there. Uh, Ebomi, did you actually show up? Well, hey, come on in. Uh, and Miss Bomi, too. Good. All right. Uh, find those other people and then come back and I'll show you what's going on here. Okay? So don't be too long because I'm tired. My back is killing me. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, I know this is probably really hard to see because it's dark down here, but uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but when you push down on this, there is a significant amount of liquid that comes up, and that is exactly what we want. That is a uh, lacto-fermentation product. Uh, the only thing in here is cabbage and salt. So that's, uh, that's what makes the reaction and that's what starts the fermentation process. Now what we need to do, as I said, this needs to be covered with the liquid, the brine, the whole time it's fermenting. And this is a 21 day process. In seven days, uh, we stir it and then let it sit for another seven then we stir it again after 14 days and then in another seven days it's done and we can eat it so uh, don't tell my sister Sharon or my sister Melody about this video because if you do they will be over here long before it's done and have it all eaten by the time I should be canning. These pieces, this is the cabbage core. I stick those down into the cabbage and after you can it, uh, if you happen to get a can that has one of those in it, it's kind of like a, a bonus. It's like a pickle, kind of, sort of, only better. So we've got some, uh, got some little cabbage cores in here, which will be good. My, both of my sisters love those. And I do too, actually. Uh, main thing is to try to get all of the air out. We don't want to leave anything on the sides of the crock. But we'll get that taken care of after we get this uh, compressed in here. I noticed uh, earlier that Days in the Garden wasn't here yet, so uh, I think he's just finally arrived. And uh, Big Daddy Hoffman's out there too, and Poison Stinger. So I'm glad you guys all showed up. And any of you that uh, are out there that I didn't mention, it simply means that you haven't been uh, acting up and drawing attention to yourself, so you've been good. All right, so what I have here is a part of a t-shirt, a clean t-shirt. Uh, we're going to put that over the cabbage and tuck it in around the edges so that we've got... Uh, the cabbage more or less contained under the liquid. And I hope you can see this. And that will make it uh, less likely to have a whole bunch of garbage on the top here while we're in the fermentation process because we don't really want that. Anything that that gets outside or above the liquid line. It's fair game to bacteria and it will uh, it will rot away. And we don't want that. Because there's nothing uh, nothing that brings back childhood memories more quickly than the smell of rotting vegetables in your basement. I have no idea. I have no idea what that means, 
But uh, anyway, I think it's something my son said. Because I did make some sauerkraut one time. It was the very first time I made it. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, that was before I talked to my Uncle Joe. And it just kind of rotted away down there and turned black and ugly and uh, nasty. We didn't eat it. All right, that, that should work for us. I do believe. And we have lots of liquid in there. So that's a good sign. All right. I am going to have to take this outdoors because that's where Bill Gowdy is right now. He wouldn't come in. So uh, we'll take that out to him later. All right. We've got the plate going in. The liquid rising above it. Now there, there will be more liquid as this uh, fermentation continues because it's, it's just very early in the process right now. Not a lot more, but some. All right, so the plate's covered. Good to go with that. We've got the five pound weight sealed in our happy little bag that should place sufficient weight on there to hold that down. The only thing left to do at this point is to put a cover over it to keep the dust out, move it to the basement, and let it sit for seven days. So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, uh, leave them down below. I will, uh, I will answer them if I, if I know the answer. As long as it's not one of those what's the meaning of life things, because I never get that one right. But, uh, until I speak with you again, and even after that, You stay safe. It fits quite nicely. I'm sorry, it doesn't fit at all. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a different plate. Hang on.